join kids hat family good night tia good night tofu Once upon a time there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch. named Dame Gothel One day the woman saw a plant called rampion which is used to make salads Dear husband I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant Oh but that belongs to the wicked witch Oh please do something I really want to eat those rampions Okay dear I will try to get it for you At midnight the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch and started taking some rampions The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it But the very same night there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong How dare you you men come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief You will suffer for it Oh please forgive me my wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her Oh If that's the truth then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants but only on one condition What is that condition You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world The man in his terror consented to everything As time passed by the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl But that very same night the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow You are such a beautiful looking girl I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you Ha 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 The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs but just a small little window as the time passed by rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks but her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere sad rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs la 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 a very handsome prince was passing by 
he stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. La la la. Oh, what a beautiful song. Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh! Who are you? Oh Lord! You are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes. Don't worry, Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh! So he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. 
The witch cast a spell on the prince. And he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! <sighs> Tia? You? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. Tia, yesterday in our class, my friend Ben forgot to bring one of his textbook and Ted offered to share his textbook with him. Ben promised Ted to help him in learning football after school. But after school, when Ted asked Ben to help as promised, instead of helping, Ben left for his home. That's bad. One should always stand by their promises. But Tia, today again Ben forgot his textbook and when he asked Ted to help, Ted refused. Tofu, we should be sensitive towards every human being. You know, we should always help people around. Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in the kingdom of a very humble king. The princess was so pampered by her father that she turned out to be a little proud of the fact that she is a princess. Many a times the king asked her to be more humble towards the people around her because that's the way a princess should be. I know, my little princess, that you are my pampered child. But you should be a little more empathetic towards other people. Everybody is same. It's just that some are fortunate, some are not. But the princess just ignored what her father had to say and went out to play with the golden ball that her father had gifted her on her birthday. She loved the ball, but no sooner had she started playing that her ball bounced and went into a pond. Oh God, my favorite golden ball! I would give anything to get back my favorite ball. Anything! 
Hearing the princess cry out loudly, a frog leaped up and sat on a lotus leaf and said, Princess, I just saw what happened. I will get the golden ball back for you. But you have to promise me something. How in the world did the slimy frog talk? The princess only wanted her ball back. So she hurriedly said yes. What is it that you want in return? I want you to take me back to your palace and pamper me. I would eat with you, play with you and sleep in bed with you. The princess was horrified at the very idea and had no intention of doing any such thing. She agreed to the condition as she thought the frog would not be able to reach the palace on his own and she had no intention of taking him along with her. She told him to hurry and get the ball back and waited with bated breath for her golden ball. The frog jumped into the pond and in no time at all came back with the golden ball. She took the ball from him and ran back to her palace as fast as she could. Princess, come back! You promised to take me with you! You can't break your promise! But the princess ignored to his calling and ran as fast as she could. She was relieved when she reached her room and soon forgot all about the frog. At night, while she was having dinner with her father, there was a loud knock on the door. Open the door, a oh princess! It's me! The frog from the pond. You promised to keep me with you. Being a true princess, you should keep up to your promise now. Who is that and what does he want? The princess, being a little scared of her father, told him about the afternoon incidents. How she broke her promise. You are a true princess, my love, and you should keep up to your promise, no matter what. Feeling helpless, the princess opened the door and let the frog enter. He hopped on to the seat next to her and asked her to let him eat from her plate. The frog ate till his tummy was full. But the princess couldn't eat a single bite thinking about the slimy frog eating from her plate. Then the frog asked her to carry him to her bedroom and let him sleep in her bed. Unwillingly, she picked him up in her hands and went upstairs. The frog jumped on her bed and snuggled cozily in her huge soft bed. The next morning, the princess got up to find the frog missing from her bed. Happily, she hopped from her bed thinking that the ordeal was over. As the night fell, the knock again happened and again the frog ate from her plate and slept in her bed. Feeling 
feeling sad about sharing her food and bed, she went to her father and asked him if she could stop now. The king again told her that a promise was a promise and cannot be broken. It was the third night when the frog came in again to eat and sleep in her bed. But the next morning, the princess was astonished to see that the frog was not in her bed. And a handsome young prince was standing next to her bed. What? Who are you? Where is the slimy frog? Dear princess, it's me, the frog. A witch cast a spell on me that could be broken only if a princess would let me eat in her plate and sleep in her bed for three nights. You broke that spell by keeping your promise and here I am standing in front of you. I am the prince from the neighboring country. Would you like to be my wife? Not able to resist the handsome prince, she said yes, but had something more to say. Oh prince, I would love to be your wife. But how would you forgive me for being so rude to you? She was guilty like hell, but the prince was a humble man. He said, Oh my dear princess, I can understand your reasons and I am ready to forgive you. But you have to promise me that in future you won't judge anybody by the way one looks or the job one does. Everyone is equal and that's how they should be treated, equally. Saying this, the prince took her in his arms and decided to take her to his kingdom where they lived happily ever after. Oh dear, you are right. We should always keep our promises and help people in need. Thanks for the lovely moral story. Come Tofu, let's go and play some games now. Yeah, I think we will take long to reach. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not Tofu? Let me tell you a story about a princess and a bad fairy. Sleeping Beauty A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long, long wait, their wish came true. A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen. The king announced to his people, we are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine. Hooray! said the people. As the baby girl turned one, Celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies, 
Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. The baby princess looked lovely. All fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl. Suddenly, the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything. As soon as the blue smoke settled, King and Queen were shocked to see the Black Fairy. She saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast, including all fairies. She became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess. On your 16th birthday, before the sun sets, you'll prick on a spindle and die. She screamed in anger and vanished. Everybody was shocked. Suddenly, a young fairy who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess said I can't take away the black fairy's curse but I'll definitely try to help when the princess pricks herself she won't die instead she'll go into a deep sleep and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her. After this, the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom. Soon, there were no sharp things in the castle. Except for one, they didn't check in the tower. As years passed by, the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl. When she turned 16, while roaming in the castle one day, she saw a magical light ball. and followed the light ball. Which took her to the top of the tower in the castle. Inside, there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel. Come here. You must try spinning this wheel. Oh, what is this? Please let me do it as well. I have never tried this. But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Black Fairy's curse had come true. Old woman, who was actually the black fairy, laughed and laughed and then disappeared. The king who remembered the words of the last fairy 
made her daughter, the princess, to lie in a room for many years to come. Fairies saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful. They all said at once, Sleeping Beauty! Soon, this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention Princess as the Sleeping Beauty. The whole kingdom was sad. Fairies noticed this and decided Let the whole kingdom fall asleep so when the princess wakes up by her prince she wouldn't be alone. Everyone in the kingdom fell asleep. The king, the queen, the servants, soldiers, everyone in town fell asleep. Even all the animals fell asleep. Everything in the kingdom stopped. Soon, a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it. About hundreds of years later, a handsome prince was riding through the forest. He saw the strange looking castle. The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the Sleeping Beauty. He had heard stories of Sleeping Beauty and started to explore it. He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping. When he entered more, he saw even the king and queen were sleeping. He looked around and saw one big pink door. He tried to open the door but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years. After trying hard, he managed to open the door and to his surprise, he found Sleeping Beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room. The moment he saw her, he just fell in love with her. I really want to know who this beautiful girl is. She looks so, so gentle and peaceful, he said. He leaned down and kissed her. Instantly, the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up. The king, queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again. The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around. The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after. Wow! It means no matter if bad people think bad for you, there are always some well-wishers to help you out. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.